background, we started Devopedia five years back and uh, we have been scaling uh, slowly and organically. And in the meantime, in these past five years, we have uh, created a good uh, community. A lot of active people in this community are contributing to Devopedia. Some of them are contributing uh, as authors, some are contributing as donors, some are uh, reviewers and so forth. So the people are playing different roles in Devopedia. Some, uh, as uh, Usha mentioned earlier, some are uh, contributing as speakers in our various events. So that is one of the things we have been doing for a long time. Because of COVID, we have moved some of the offline classroom workshops to online uh, talks. So we have not been doing any uh, online workshops, uh, which are very exhaustive. Rather, we have uh, changed the format to one hour tech talks. So that is something we are doing now uh, regularly. And we are putting those uh, talks on YouTube as well. Apart from this, these uh, tech talks and events, our primary focus is still on the platform. That is uh, writing articles and publishing articles uh, uh, with the view that, uh, you know, uh, by sharing content in this manner, we hope that people find it easier to get into a particular area of technology. So the idea of, uh, you know, doing these uh, writing, uh, publishing these articles is that we want to kind of uh, make it easier for people to understand technology. So that is the idea with which uh, the platform was created. Uh, so the growth has been a little bit uh, disappointing because we didn't get a lot of authors in the beginning. But lately we changed our model. We have started paying authors for their contributions. So authors were uh, invited to send their uh, profiles and then we conducted a round of interviews. And from that round of interviews, we selected about uh, 45 authors. And out of that 45, uh, right now, maybe around 12 authors are active. So these authors are producing articles on a regular basis. Uh, but reviewers are needed to uh, make sure that the uh, content that comes into the platform is of good quality. So that is where you guys come in. So the this particular model, uh, which we call rewards program, where we pay authors, so this has been around since mid of uh, December. So it's been uh, less than two months since we started this program. So we have published a number of uh, articles since since the program was launched, but everything goes through me as a reviewer. So that is a bottleneck. So we want to break that bottleneck. And this is where I hope you as reviewers uh, will uh, play an important role. Let's get to the first slide. So uh, before I start talking about the review process and what to look for as a reviewer, uh, what should, uh, uh, what are your attributes as a reviewer, uh, it's better to get familiar with the system. Many of you have used the system at some point, I'm sure. Uh, some of you, in fact, are people like uh, Sudeep and Sudhir, uh, they are already authors on the platform, so they are somewhat familiar. But for those of you who are new, who have not authored any articles on Devopedia, I'll start with a quick overview of what the web app provides. And after that, we'll get into the review process. So we'll switch from the slides to. Uh, the uh, Devopedia web app platform. So I hope everyone can see this. This is the home page. And this is the menu. So you uh, some of the menu items are enabled only after you log in. So right now I am logged in. I have used my Google ID to log in. Uh, so you uh, so as a See, unlike Wikipedia, where people can contribute even without a login, Devopedia uh, requires uh, authors to have a login. And the same is true for reviewers as well. So the first thing you need to do as a reviewer is to create an account with Devopedia. If you already have an account, you can use that account. Otherwise, create a new one. Okay. So once you create a new one, then you should be able to see this uh, extra items in the menu. For example, add article which is enabled for authors. So this is probably something you may not be using as a reviewer. Dashboard is also not applicable to you because uh, you know this is uh, only uh, 
use more, it's more useful for authors to keep track of all the edits and the notifications and so on. But even as a reviewer, this dashboard will be useful to you because when you give review comments, those comments will appear in this section, my chats. So whenever you give comment, you can track all your comments through this dashboard where you have uh, all the list of your comments. It doesn't matter which article you are commenting on, everything will be captured in one place. So that way this dashboard uh, page will be useful to you as a reviewer. Let's look at a particular article on Devopedia. So let's take for example cloud computing. So this article is already published. So this is the cloud computing article. So a typical article starts with a summary of a few words which gives an overview of the topic. Then it goes into discussion where we list the questions and then the answers for the same. Each answer can contain a zero or one image. It could be a video also, uh, or it could be an image. People can also embed audio files, but that is very rare. People typically prefer uh, either video or uh, an image. So typically the authors will identify kind of questions which are useful for a beginner to understand this topic. You know, the questions may not be very advanced, uh, very basic questions. Remember, this article is introducing cloud computing to somebody who is new to this topic. So naturally, the questions will be uh, very basics to, uh, uh, to introduce cloud computing at a very high level. And in this example, for example, uh, we may not even talk about edge computing here because that is again a very uh, uh, separate topic, a separate article on Devopedia. So it's very important uh, you know, to scope out the article clearly. So that is anyway the job of the author, but this is something as a reviewer you will also look for. OK, so where exactly do you and after this, uh, the other sections are milestones where milestones track how a particular topic has evolved. Then everything uh, in Devopedia must be referenced. Suppose an author writes this, how does a reader know uh, or how does a reader get confidence that what author has written is correct? So this is uh, enabled using references and citations. So what you see here is a list of references. This is what we call as a reference written in a specific format. What you see as an asterisk here, this is what we call as a citation. So citation links to a specific reference in the reference section. So this is also something which the author has to write. Further reading is a section which you know kind of uh, important. Uh, so this is like a pointer to the uh, readers. See after they have read this article, what do they do next? Can they read other articles related to this uh, topic? So further reading actually relates to articles where they can learn a little bit more about cl cloud computing. So that is the purpose of further reading. So you can duplicate uh, items from references section to further reading. There is no harm in having them in both the places. OK, there is a difference between further reading and see also. See also also has a similar role. It points to other articles uh, related to this article on cloud computing, but there is a difference between further reading and see also. See also points to articles within Devopedia. Whereas further reading points to articles external to Devopedia. These are all external links where they can, the reader can know more about the topic. Whereas C also are internal links. They point to other articles within the Devopedia system. Article stats, cite as, these are not written by authors. There is no review needed for these things. So these are all automatically generated by the system. Okay. So this is a broad overview of what an article page looks like. Mainly what you will be reviewing is the summary, the discussion part and the milestones. Of course, you have to also look at references for the reading and see also and the tags the authors are using, but these are trivial things to review. The bulk of the review will be on three sections, summary, discussion, and milestones. These are the three main sections that uh, as a reviewer you have to look at. Where do you give the review comments? So here there are a bunch of links on the right side of the article. This link gives a list of all the versions. You can see a diff of the versions. You can also go and see a particular version. 
the last icon, this is the chat room icon. This is where you give your comments. So you write down your comments, submit it, it goes online and uh, the author will get notified automatically. And when you are giving your comments, you can also select a particular section. Let's say you are giving comments on the milestones. You select that and give your comments. So that is one way to do it. The other way is, you know, you can simply say milestones and then say one, some comment, two, some comment and so on. For summary, three, something, four, something. So you can, you know, do it like this as well, more freehand style. Or if you want to break it up into multiple comments, you can do like this. One, something, two, something, and you select a particular section which you are commenting. Let's say summary. So on summary, I'm giving these comments. So either approach is fine. Yeah. So at this point, any questions before we go back to the slides? I just gave an overview of what the Devopedia system looks like and uh, what are the main sections in an article and where you can give your review comments. Uh, Arvind, just a quick check. I, I can't remember. Uh, when it comes to these comments, um, I suppose when it's an edit phase, the comments would be visible to the author and the reviewer only, right? It's not made av available public yet. Uh, yeah, in fact, that is uh, has to do with the status of the article. So let's take right. another article on, on the system, which is not yet published. So cloud computing is a published article. Let's take uh, Netlify. So you notice that this article has not been published. That means you can say that anybody visiting the system will not be able to see this article at all. But once a person logs in, they can see the article and the comments. Even the comments are visible. OK, so what you're saying is that the comments which were added during the review phase would also be made available once it's published. Is yeah, that comments are always always public. What is really oh. important is whether the article is published or not. Got it. If the article is published, the pub, uh, you need to log in to see the article and the comments. Got it. OK. Yeah, but if the art, uh, article is published, uh, you know, but in any case, comments are always visible. It's not that after publishing the article, comments disappear. OK, got it. Comments are always visible, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, hey, I mean, so yeah. is it not like uh, the comment should be made private, like uh, it should be between the author and the editor? No, it's Did not you? like that. We follow the Wikipedia rule. If you go to any page on Wikipedia, you will see a top page. Okay. Let's uh, take a page on Wikipedia. Wikipedia MongoDB. So this is an article on Wikipedia MongoDB. You can see here along with the article, there is a talk where the discussion on. Uh, this is just guidelines for talk. So here talk is there. Is that talk? Post and OK, this is a strange article. There is no talk here. What about some other article? Yeah, so there is some talk here. If you take some uh, popular articles, India, let's say Indian Premier League, okay. Indian Premier League, if you go to the top page, you see here all the top comments, they are all public. It's not just between reviewer and author because anybody can be an author on the system. Does that answer your question? Yes. OK, but we'll have more uh, Q&A later. Uh, somebody has a question. Go ahead. Sorry, Arvin. This uh, talk is more uh, not related to updating the uh, page in Wikipedia, right? Only the history co covers the, the actual updates. Talk is, is it also related to somebody giving a comment to somebody to update it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, people uh, always uh, discuss on the talk channel before editing the article. That is the recommended procedure. In fact, many of the things in Devopedia are uh, like adapted from Wikipedia. 
so this idea of chat room and the discussion is not something uh, we invented in devopedia it's all borrowed from wikipedia only okay thanks sir yeah So well, let's look at the rewards program. Uh, so the process is, uh, has a lot of steps, but from this entire process, a reviewer is involved only in one particular step. So that is when the author creates the article and prepares the article so that it is ready for review. When the article is ready for review, then you know uh, the reviewer's uh, role comes into play. And this will happen a few iterations. So you will give some comments and the author will go back and edit the article. And once the article is edited, uh, you will do a second review, third review and so forth. By the time of the third review, uh, you will definitely get a sense whether the author is able to complete this article or not. Because sometimes author may not understand your comments or they may find that topic too difficult to continue. So by the time of the second or third review, as a reviewer, you will get a sense whether you know this author can do the job but typically you know if uh, uh, the topic is not too difficult uh, the author should be able to complete the article and you will also see with every version it improves as they implement your review comments so what happens before and after so uh, in the rewards program the author actually makes a proposal for the article that is uh, he or she proposes a title and identifies the initial list of questions. This also goes through a review, a review process. But this review process today, it is done by me and uh, we'll continue like this for some time. Later, maybe this also will be offloaded to you guys as a reviewer. But right now, let's uh, keep the process simple. So the proposal stage, I will handle it. Right? But don't think that the initial questions identified by the author, they are like final set in stone, they are not. When they do the actual writing, there is a lot of leeway. They can uh, modify the questions because when they do more research, they will understand the topic better. So you, you have to uh, see whether the questions are proper. So this initial review is just like a getting criteria, just to make sure the article has at least sufficient scope to qualify under the rewards program. So that is the purpose of this. Then once the... Uh, article goes through reviews done by you and it reaches a certain level of quality then you can give the green signal to to the mod, like the admin i'll tell you how to do it later then i will take over from there and publish the article and uh, you know do the rest of the process where you know we collect the bank details from the author make the payment so that is all handled by the system you don't have to worry about that so your job is when the first review uh, when the article is ready for the first review, it will go through a few iterations. And after that, you will tell the admin, this article is now ready for publishing. So that concludes your uh, involvement in the article. But subsequently, any edits that are made to the article, you will get a notification. You don't have to respond to that notification, but you, you will get a notification nonetheless. And you can disable the notification if you want, but it's not recommended because it will hamper the review process. So yeah, we'll keep the questions for later. Uh, I'm sure you have some questions here, but uh, there are some other slides which clarify this process. OK, the review process, I already showed you on an article page where to give the comments. So first is to create an account. Uh, try to use the same email address that we have been using for communi communicating. Uh, it doesn't matter right now, but later when we automate the system, this email address will be used to figure out that you are a reviewer. So right now in the system, you don't have any spe special privilege as a reviewer. You have the same privileges as an author. But uh, you know, uh, maybe three months later, when we feel that this review process is mature, then we may start automating some of these processes. So that time, this email address becomes important. As a reviewer, you may get special permission. So I already showed you these things. Uh, review will go through a few iterations. Uh, author is notified for every comment. 
and uh, when the article is ready for publishing you have to send an email to this address saying that this article is ready for publishing just to send a link to the article so then the admin will take over and complete the process review comments so uh, some basic things so comments are truncated to 5000 characters so typically a, a review will not have more than this but in case you have more than this kind of comments there are two ways you can split it you can split the long comment into multiple comments and put them as multiple entries here or like i showed you you split it naturally into three sections three or four sections like summary you give one comment milestones one discussion so using this drop down you can split it into multiple comments but practically uh, very rarely you will hit this kind of a limit and i showed you earlier you can number your comments like here you can see here 1 2 3 4 so that is only a convention so that when you later discuss with author second review and third review you can make references to those points so it's easy for discussing or pointing out to the author exactly which point you are discussing okay you can also edit your own comments suppose you made a mistake in a comment you can edit it so as you can see here there is a edit icon on the left side so this is uh, visible only for your own comments so as a viewer you uploaded a comment but then you realized there is some error big error you want to correct it so you can go and uh, like edit the comment so even for editing the author will be notified comments are public so this is what sonal asked or sudeep also asked comments are public so don't share any sensitive information here okay like for example your email address so i am just putting this slide for completeness uh, this is all adopted from wikipedia uh, so if you have read the author guidelines you are already know what this is no original research neutral point of view verifiability so this is where references and citations come in neutral point of view understood no original research what it means uh, let's say uh, you know anuradha made some original research in cloud computing she can't add that to that article she has to publish in some other journal and then she can uh, write in devopedia by uh, citing a reference to that journal so original research should not be first published in devopedia it has to be something that is published somewhere else uh, so this is again a topic for authors but it's important for reviewers also to understand this who is the audience who are we writing for so there is no strict uh, definition but uh, it's easy to figure out based on the title of the topic and the scope of the topic so suppose i the topic is data science this is a topic which is of general interest to people so it's not just for a developer who is writing code but even a project manager may want to know what is data science even a lay person like my dad or mom who are not associated with uh, software for example they may want to know what is data science so for a topic like this the audience is generally very broad but doesn't mean that you should dumb it down so that you know it becomes too basic you can uh, still you have to keep in mind you are writing for a developer but you have to simplify so that even these guys can understand it so that is the kind of uh, thing the author has to keep in mind but let's take another topic rest api to graphql migration now there is no way a lay person is going to be interested in this so you can straight away make a call this is a topic probably developer and project manager will be interested at the most a lay person is not going to get interested in something like this because this is little bit more technical going deeper python data types so this is more at the level of writing a program coding so definitely even a project manager may not be interested in this the only person interested in this topic is a developer so as an author you should be clear what is your topic and who is going to be interested in this and that very much depends on the nature of the topic 
qualities of a good reviewer. So all of you are experienced, so I will not explain too much on this. Humble. I'll come to this a little later also. Meticulous. So look at the big picture, but also the fine details. Impartial. So suppose somebody is working at uh, company X and you are, the article is about a product of company X. So the reviewer should not become biased. Still the neutral tone of the topic should be preserved. Polite, uh, so reviewers, uh, authors are all very new. So they make a lot of mistakes. So I've been reviewing last six weeks. It is not an easy job. So sometimes I also get frustrated. So we have to try to give comments in a neutral tone, not to be too harsh on the authors. Patient, uh, so even though you give review comments, they will continue to make the same mistakes. So we have to be patient to keep. So uh, let's say I gave 10 comments in first review. Then after review, they it comes back for second review. I will find that the three comments are not implemented. They have implemented only seven of those. So then you have to go back and maybe you have to explain a little bit more those three comments. So what is the minimum criteria for a review? So criteria is uh, it should be minimum 1200 words. Article shouldn't have any warnings and uh, good references. Especially the last point is very important because this is where authors are making a lot of mistakes. And we'll talk about this a little later. Uh, why good references important? Uh, so basically garbage in garbage out, just like machine learning. If your references are very bad, the quality of the article will also be naturally bad. So that's why the research should be really good from authors. Only then they can produce a quality article. Warnings I will show you on the article page. So you see this article, Netlify, it's not yet published. And here you will see there are warnings. Improve this article. If you click this, you see that the article has three warnings. When you see warnings, it means that article is not ready for review. So it can't be reviewed. But what about the other uh, criteria? Minimum 1200 words. So this article is 40, 1400 words, so it qualifies. right? And the lock simply means that currently the author is editing this article. That's what the lock means. Otherwise, you will see an edit icon. But right now we see a lock icon. It means currently the author is editing it. He opened the article for editing at exactly 1038. You can see the date also. So this is what article warnings is all about. So when you see warnings, it means it is not yet ready for review. But of course, uh, reviewers may at their discretion comments a review. We even when some of the above things are not met. So sometimes the article may have only 800 words. And only one warning, let's say. And the author is requesting for a review and you may say, OK, it's fine. Let's have a review before. Uh, we do a more exhaustive review later, so you can uh, you can decide as a reviewer. So these are some, uh, yeah, so you may be wondering on what basis does the system generate warnings? The system actually checks for a lot of limits. Summary 150 words maximum. These are maximum limits. So some of these limits are uh, like strictly enforced. If you write 180 words, you will not be even, author can't even save the article, let alone warning. It will be treated as an error, right? So. So this is not so much as a, so some of these are definitely warnings, but uh, they will appear as warnings when the author is editing and they will not be able to save the article if these warnings appear. So another point is, uh, you know, a minimum word length for a good article is 500 words, but under the rewards program, we have a limit minimum limit of 1200 words. So uh, article should be at least 1200 words. Other limits, uh, you can read about it, uh, like three to eight tags, three to six C also items and so on. Anyway, you don't have to remember this just for your reference. Okay, research, 
so take any article uh, there are two types of research uh, sources it can either be primary sources or secondary sources so primary sources are like uh, research papers conference papers ieee acm lcbr archive books official documentation what do i mean by official let's assume that uh, the article is on rust language so the doc documentation maintained at the rust website that would be treated as official docs so similarly for any other product like uh, react native somebody said so react native will uh, have some official documentation so that would be treated as a primary source so obviously uh, authors are asked to prefer primary sources historical records like email threads in mailing list standards ieee standards 3gpp standards press releases so for example we are talking about an article uh, uh, about a particular product from nvidia let's say so nvidia before releasing the product they will make a press release so that press release is considered as a primary source because they are talking about their own product so naturally it's a primary source but what are secondary sources secondary sources are people who have read these things and written their own articles so like tech blogs wikipedia news articles tutorials videos etc etc these are all secondary sources right so they are not the guys who invented the technology or owners of the technology but they read these original sources they participated in these uh, communities and they produced their own sources so these are secondary sources so secondary sources are allowed but not preferred when you have primary sources these should be preferred that is what authors are told so if you see a article that comes up for review where most of the references are from wikipedia you should straight away reject the review so you should tell the reviewer you uh, know the article is probably not that good out of 20 references i find that uh, 10 of them are wikipedia so obviously it's not such a good uh, research there so i won't go through this examples of good sources again coming referring to the previous slide some acceptable sources so secondary sources wikipedia analytics vidya vendor blogs etc etc so what do i mean by vendor blogs uh, let's say ibm ibm is a vendor of cloud computing they write an article uh, about uh, c++ so they are uh, uh, so it's not a primary source but it's a good secondary source like ibm is a reputed vendor and lot of their products are built on c++ and they expose c++ apis uh, at a low level so they know what they are talking about and their documentation is very good so based on all this criteria i will say that even though this particular article is coming from a c++ documentation from ibm i will treat it as a high highly reputed source as good as a primary source but they uh, yeah so you have to take a call there are a lot of parameters you have to take a call some sources are perceived as low quality so in fact right now we allow this but a warning appears in the article now some of these are very common data flare aduc b edureka guru 99 java t point w3 schools and the reason lot of authors start using this is because somehow they are publishing lot of articles on their sites and google ranks them highly on seo but as far as research is concerned these are all very poor sources so the system today wants uh, the authors that there is a warning these are all poor sources replace them with better sources so a guideline for reviewers is whenever you see a site with lots of ads no author name most of the writing is done by ghost writing then you can straight away say pretty well, pretty certainly that it is a low quality source now what about the social sites quora stack overflow medium youtube videos etc etc other kind of uh, blogs and stuff like that they are allowed but 
provided they have a high number of claps, likes, shares, views. That means people in the community have voted highly for those particular articles. So if I find in the reference, let's say, an uh, Stack Overflow answer, which, which has only two, uh, let's say, two likes, then uh, we should not be using that as a reference. But let's say I take a medium article which has like 1.5 K claps. That means the community has uh, recognized that article as a high quality article. So we can allow that as a good source. Reference example, uh, I will not go into it, but it's uh, quite important. Uh, maybe if you have time, we'll come back to this. Uh, but the typical system we have adopted is the Chicago Manual of Style, and it should be in this format, author name, year of publishing, title, details of publishing. It could be a blog or news, press release, slides, presentation slides. So that description you can include here. Or if it's from a journal, give the name of the journal. Give, for example, volume X, number three, April, or page number. So all that is details of publication. Website or publisher's name. So here, name is HubSpot, or it could be YouTube or SlideShare, you know, one of those sources, data publication. In some cases, after it is published, it is updated. So then you say the updated date. When the author accessed this for research and the URL. So these are the typical things that you should look for. Even if you don't get this perfectly, that's fine uh, because uh, yeah, at, at least the basic thing should be in should be in place. Yeah. What to review? We covered this summary, discussion, milestone. These are the main sections to review. Others, tags, references for the reading. Aspects of a review, you have to review both content and style. Maybe content is more important. If you don't want to review, I mean, if you don't want to spend too much on the styling, that's fine. We can, uh, you know, correct this later also, but content is very important, reviewing on the content. So these are some things to look for. No factual errors, no obvious emissions. Content is relevant, properly scoped. Content is organized in a logical manner. Text complements embedded media, good sources are used as references, citations are accurate. So a little bit explanation for each of this. If you are an ex experienced in that in that area of uh, in that technical area, let's say Sridhar is uh, experienced in 5G, he may immediately make out, okay, there is a factual error here. But let's say Sridhar is reviewing an article not related to 5G, maybe a specific subtopic of Wi-Fi, which may not be his core expertise, but he's uh, chosen as the reviewer. So then he may not immediately know that there is a factual error, but he may have a suspicion or he may be curious. Let me verify this. So then he has to follow the citation and see whether the source has a record of this particular fact. And uh, if either the source doesn't have it or there's a misinterpretation, the review will fail on both these counts. That means uh, the cite citation that is noted doesn't actually have this fact which is given in the article. So that is one example uh, for reviewing this aspect of uh, article. No obvious em omissions in subject matter. So for this, let's take an example. Let's go back to, let's say, cloud computing. So cloud computing, uh, why do we need cloud computing? What are the characteristics? What are some of the myths? What are the different cloud compute, cloud deployment models? So here author has explained public, private, hybrid. Let's assume this question is not there in this article. But this is a very important question for a high level article on cloud computing. This question is a must. So this is what we would treat it as no obvious emission omissions. That means that is a very obvious question for a beginner, but the author has not covered that. So as a reviewer, you have to point that out. Content is relevant and properly scoped. What do I mean by this? 
So let's take an example of MongoDB. Now MongoDB is a very wide topic. There is a lot that can be said about MongoDB. And uh, you, you take an example, what are the main features? How MongoDB organizes data, main features, use cases. So all that is done. But now let's assume that the author writes a question. How does the MongoDB query language work? Right, that is also a very important question. It's not a bad question, but this is where scope of the article comes into play. See, the author is trying to answer the question. Uh, can you share details of the MongoDB query language? But as a reviewer, you have to point out that query language is a vast topic by itself. It should be in a separate article. So discussion on query language is probably not suitable for this high level article on MongoDB. So as you can see here, MongoDB query language is a separate article. It doesn't come here. So that is what I mean by scoping the article. Same thing, we can also look at the cloud computing article. You see here cloud security is not covered in this article because it's not of the right scope for this article because cloud security by itself is a big topic. Why should we cover it in this high level article on cloud computing? So as a reviewer, you should also be able to figure out you know, whether the article is scoped correctly. Okay. So coming to styling, uh, so it's uh, important from Devopedia perspective, but as a reviewer, you know, I would say if you are short of time, better to spend the time in reviewing the content rather than the styling. So styling probably we can take care of it later as well. Yeah. So writing uh, style follows author guidelines. Content is written for a beginner. Yeah, that is important. No grammar or spelling errors. So you need not check this. If you notice something, you can point out. But we have uh, a machine learning model to catch this. But the model is not yet in production. Once it goes into production, uh, you know, this is not going to be so important for a reviewer because our machine learning model will catch it anyway. Good use, but not overuse of styling. References and citations are formatted correctly. Tips for reviewer. So I won't go through this. You can uh, look at the author presentation. Like we gave a presentation for authors. These are mostly taken from there. Right. So common problems which I see is some people do this. They just take a bunch of text from the source and copy and paste into the article. We don't want that. They should collect information from different sources and summarize it nicely. That is what is expected from author, not just copying and pasting. Okay. So what are the common problems? So common problem is first common problem is poor research. Most of the authors, they are using Google search. Which only gives you some amount of research, uh, some amount of good matches. And most of the matches via Google search are blogs, which is very disappointing or which is counterproductive for research. And because when Google search brings forward all the blogs in its search results, we are mainly getting the secondary sources, not the primary sources. So this is the real problem of Google search. And it's a problem in any, any other search engine. If Google search gets it wrong, it's guaranteed that other search engines are also getting it wrong. So what is a better uh, thing for uh, authors? They should be using Google Scholar. So that gives you much better sources for research. Okay. And typically, uh, ad-driven sites, blogs, Wikipedia, they are all, all like secondary sources, should not be preferred. Gaming. What do I mean by gaming? Some authors are trying to game the system because they have figured out art, the Devopedia system looks at the number of, uh, number of citations, number of images, uh, number of references, and the warnings are based on this. So they simply add a citation randomly just to remove the warnings, article warnings. 
But if you go and dig deep, you will find that the text in the article doesn't match the citation. So this is what I mean by gaming. So this is a very serious problem. Maybe much more serious than poor research because this is uh, conveying the author's intent to uh, cheat the system. So this is a serious problem as well, but uh, I have seen this only with one or two authors. AGRism, I already mentioned this. People have to summarize from multiple sources, not just copy paste from a single source. Repetition. So content is repeated across the article. Content is poorly organized, disconnected paragraphs, ideas don't flow. So this is uh, very obvious in many articles which are poorly written. So what do I mean by repetition? They will introduce the top summary. Then the same thing will be covered in the first question. And uh, one or two lines again will appear in a different way in the third question, fourth question. So that is what I mean by repetition. So why does this happen? If you analyze a little bit, what ha what really happens is they search for this question on the web and then they try to answer this question. So they would find the answer for this in some website. That website is naturally not going to answer this question directly. It is going to first cover what is cloud computing. So what the authors do, they do the same thing. They take first two lines to explain what is cloud computing and then they get into the answer. So what this results is that across the article, you will find a lot of content which is repetitive. A lot of places they keep explaining what is cloud computing. We don't want that, right? So this is again a common problem, repetition. Last one, formatting, this has to do with styling, yeah. So this is a high level introduction that I have given, but uh, you can look at the articles already published on Devopedia. So cloud computing in this example. So, so far we have been looking at this article, uh, the content of the article, but you can look at the previous comments which I have given. So this is a comment which I have given on, on this article. So you can see here the way I have organized. It may not be perfect, but you will get some idea what kind of review comments I have been giving on the article. So it will give you an idea how to do the review. So this is really for self-study. So finally, a big thank you to all the reviewers for your time and expertise. Uh, so I hope that definitely we, uh, your effort is going to help us to scale. Now, if this uh, initiative is successful, we will introduce more automation. So some of the review process is right now manual, semi-automated, you can say. So we'll, uh, you know, in the coming months, we'll uh, wait and watch. And if it is successful, we'll be, make it more automated and the reviewers will become, uh, will, will have special privileges in the system. Right now, reviewers are not paid, but this is something Devopedia trustees will look into later this year, whether any payment can be uh, thought of. Uh, reviewers can also be uh, volunteer authors, but they can't be paid under the rewards program. So you can continue to write articles for Devopedia, but uh, not under the rewards program uh, banner, because under this program, you are a reviewer, not an author. Finally, author and the reviewer, they can't co communicate directly using email address because email address is not visible. They are kept private in the system. So the only way you can communicate is via the chat room. But uh, if uh, this is uh, an issue, then you can uh, raise it with me. Then for that particular article, I will share the email address of the author. That is uh, after getting permission from the author. So that way you can communicate directly by email as well. So any questions at this point? This is the last slide, yeah. Uh, so Arvind, we no. have to review the, the, the articles which are assigned to us, right? Yeah, yeah. So that process will start only uh, a week's time from now. Okay. Next Sunday we have another call similar to this. Okay. 
and after that we uh, the from let's say 14th uh, i can start assigning is it 14th yeah from 14th onwards and i also noticed uh, in the last 3 weeks i have been seeing articles come up for view on monday morning because uh, i figured out that people are working on saturday sunday and then they submit it for review on monday morning which means that as a reviewer you have to give some time monday or tuesday otherwise uh, if you wait till weekend then we lose a lot of time so but not all review uh, I, mean, i mean it's gen some pattern i have observed but uh, doesn't mean that during weekdays or weekends articles don't come up for review but this is what i have observed for 3 weeks yeah any other questions uh is there any timelines uh, for the review process to be completed the whole process see when the article is picked up by the author it should be published within 4 weeks that means from the point it is assigned to the author to the point it is published 4 weeks but if they don't complete in 4 weeks we are not too strict so typically we easily give an extension of 2 weeks and even after that two weeks if the author request we can give an extension so that is not a problem from the perspective of reviewer uh, try to do it within two or three days so that the author is not kept waiting okay uh, another question so like uh, once the review is completed so as you mentioned that like we will have to send a email, uh, invite or email uh, into the admin uh, email id yeah yeah so is there no uh, other way like we we are just submitting the review and like it will be notified to you or the admin yeah if you, there is another way the other way is here itself you say in the chat room because admin will get all the chats so what you do is uh, along with the final review you say this article is now ready for publishing or you start the review like this or after the final you, review you make a comment this article is ready for publishing so i will take note of it so if you don't want to send uh, email you can do it this way that yeah but it has okay. it has to be explicit because otherwise i will not know whether you are talking to the author or talking to the admin okay another question so uh, once the review is completed and like if the review comments are there and the uh, author has made those changes now uh, i think the author can still edit the content right yeah yeah they can edit okay. so like i have submitted for like the review has been completed and i have notified that it is good to publish and after that like uh, the author makes any changes after that means before it is published yes it's okay that that is not an issue yeah okay that is not see we uh, see when the uh, typically we find uh, the author will not take the trouble to edit the article once the reviewer has said it is ready for publishing so they will uh, typically try to move on to the next article so in any case even if they edit uh, i will take note of it what is the change that has happened because every change the admin is notified okay okay yeah, yeah. Uh, so i mean one question more uh, like what is the frequency right now like uh, since you have been uh, working on this so how many articles to come like for uh, for me me like suppose if i'm working in big days and like uh, what is the frequency i will be getting like one yeah so we are now thinking that uh, yeah good question we are thinking that because we have like 10 plus reviewers uh, people will get only one article per month okay right uh, so it will not be mm, at the most two articles let's say only two articles in a month because we also don't we know that reviewers are all busy we don't want to overload a single reviewer but if the reviewer is uh, little uh, like in your case you are open to reviewing react or react native you may never get an article to review for a long time 
because your uh, topics is very uh, like narrowly focused towards react and react native so you may have to wait for a long time for your first article to review but if you are more broad based like uh, ramanathan uh, will can review on statistics or data science so he will get lot of articles for review but there are other reviewers also who are well versed in data science machine learning so typically they will get more articles for uh, so it, the nature of the topic also matters So now question for you guys. Suppose let's say Sudeep, uh, let's let maybe not Sudeep. Let's say uh, okay, we we'll take Sudeep as an example. He said he's uh, he can review certain aspects of uh, computing. Let's say computer architecture or software architecture. But it doesn't mean that he is an expert in software architecture. So which means that it goes back to one of our earlier points. where as a reviewer you should not assume that you know everything about the topic because once you think that uh, then uh, there is a danger that uh, the review will be of poor quality you will like for example we we said that you should not miss out on obvious omissions in the article so let's say if uh, the author has not answered this particular question you should in your review you should catch that even though you are not uh, an expert in cloud computing you should be able to catch that how is it possible so that is possible if you yourself do some research to figure out whether this article is written properly so that is the i mean that is the way i do it so if you restrict your review process to what you know then uh, you know the quality of the review so that is one point i wanted to share i think it's important for reviewers to realize what they don't know as well and uh, which means that they have to do their own research before they can review that article so i always do research whenever an article comes for review like an article on c++ inheritance i have been writing c++ code for long, many years but i still do the research uh, i do google search google scholar, scholar search i spend uh, one hour reading about those things before i take a look at that article whether the article meets all those things that i found in my research so that i found was a good way to preserve the quality of the article any other questions so i hope you are excited about this uh, i will share something so this i will email you guys can you see this yes so this is a very simple quiz just for you to get a hang of it deadline is uh, 12th feb 4 pm that is saturday is it saturday yeah so then sunday next sunday same time we'll have a review of the assessment so the first few questions are all mcqs about uh, so easily you can do it in few uh, few minutes then from 10th question onwards uh, it is more subjective so you have to describe what is wrong with this content so that is 10 11 12 13 14 15 so these are the things and you can submit your responses via the google form here so you can do all this offline and then when you are ready you can go to the google form and upload the answers i will also open the form to show you how it is so it's like this so mcqs is like this and then here you can just copy and paste your answers so you may not naturally you will not be an expert in these things right these are all different topics iot analytics kafka factor analysis quantum algorithm 
I'm sure nobody has experience in this. But still, as a reviewer, you have to see what you can do with this. What problems you can find. So you may have to do some Google query, and spend 15 minutes understanding the topic at least before you can answer the question. So then we will uh, review this next Sunday. Then from 14th onwards, uh, yeah, you will start getting your like assignments. So now the uh, yeah, OK, I'll open the. This one itself. Anyone wants to make any changes here? This is uh, what I understood your areas of expertise. So obviously we'll try to assign topics which are within your areas of expertise. Yeah, so Anuradha already updated her areas of expertise. Anyone else wants to add or make changes? I don't know whether that splits, but system engineering you can add for me whether that is. Vaishali, right? Yeah, yeah, Vaishali. System engineering. Yes, yes. Okay. Vijay Simha is not on call, but he will be joining uh, the review. OK, then yeah. This video will also be there. Re recording will be there on YouTube. Uh, so before we log off, quick feedback, just one line feedback from everyone. Starting with, uh, let's say, Sridhar. Or Vaishali. Yeah, I, I think it was very well summarized. Uh, uh, got to know a few things, uh, how to review as well, because I'm doing it for the first time. Um, I remember yeah, I've for everyone, it is first time, uh, except that people like Sudeep and Ramanathan will have an easier time because they have in the past been authors on Devopedia. Okay. Okay. So they know they are somewhat familiar with the system. Sure. But for people like you, uh, it, and me, everyone else, it's new. So okay. any queries, you can get back to me. I will answer them. Sure, sure. Yeah, Pankaj. Thank you so much. Yes, sir, Arvind. Yeah, any uh, feedback, one line feedback or comments? No, like uh, we, like most of the things we are aware of, I think. But uh, yeah, when we do real uh, one review, that time only yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. will be the struggle. <laughs> Starting, starting problem will come. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I will also look at your review comments for the first uh, article. I guess. Yeah. Sonal, your comments. Uh, yeah, so as it's a first time for me as well. So uh, like I'll be learning as something new as well as it will be adding, uh, adding into my profile. And sure, sure. kind of a new experience for me. Yeah. So as I pointed out, this is important. Uh, this slide. So you look at existing articles and the comments I have given on those articles. And some of those like linear regression, I think Ramanathan also has give some, given some comments. So you can take a look. So that will give you an idea how to catch things. OK, then who is next? Uh, Sudeep. Yeah, I think it's good, uh, Arvind. Thanks for the presentation and the slides have kind of captured all the key points. Yeah, it looks good to me. OK, OK, Ramanathan. Yeah, it's nicely put. Thanks. I'm okay, good. I hope it's uh, clear. Uh, so when you yeah, do, do the exercises, you will get a hang of it. Yeah, Arvind, uh, yeah. a couple of quick questions. Yeah. So uh, this one. Uh, 
one is the first time reviewing of an article uh, you uh, the reviewer will find a few comments then when the author incorporates again the reviewer needs to go back and review and see that the comments are actually uh, yeah taken care so it's going to be a, a multi meaning iterative this thing correct yeah yeah that is one thing and also in first review you may not catch everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you so second review you may catch a few more things and so on okay and 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 how many articles are are waiting for to be reviewed uh, arvin well uh, as of now yeah as of now uh, maybe 3 or 4 not too many yeah okay okay uh, and then who's next uh, Harsha, any comments or thoughts? Yeah, nicely put <clears throat> all the points. Most probably with this one or two review, uh, even the reviewer might turn to author. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh, that is good to know. Yeah, Usha, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I got to know a lot about uh, reviewing process. Uh, there's a structural process to uh, reviewing which I was not aware of. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing. Yeah. Yeah, so that uh, article on probabilistic neural networks, I gave a lot of review comments to the author from my own research. Sure, I'll have a look but, at it because so that is another thing that you can study. Yeah, that yeah. article is not yet published. I think uh, she's working on. It has gone through two reviews. Now she is uh, working on this this weekend. It will come up for review on Monday. So next week it will get published. Sure, I'll uh, go through the review comments, and uh, because I never knew there is so much structure to reviewing process, so it's yeah. all uh, new to me as well. So I'll go through it definitely. And also, uh, just general point for everyone: uh, this this is a problem which I also faced when the article first comes up for review. We tend to review uh, what is written by the author, and as a result, we tend to miss out what is not written by the author. that means again it's a question of catching omissions so in many cases uh, at least in the first few reviews i was uh, making this mistake i was giving review comments to what they had written but i later on i realized that the overall structure of the article itself had some flaws there are many critical things about the topic which they have omitted and if they had included that those uh, items uh, the article would have been far better so so that issues are also there and uh, one big challenge is uh, very specialized topics for example any article that comes up on quantum computing is very specialized and i don't think any of us here uh, are in a position to review that so uh, but one author, one author is interested in this topic uh, so i said go ahead write it uh, so she wrote the article on qubit and the article was published so i did lot of reviews on the article based on my own study but i was also not confident so after publishing it i sent it to reddit for review so on reddit uh, there were many critical comments they said the article is poorly written so you can also sometimes leverage the wider community for comments for very specialized topics but you see this kind of thing is not uh, encouraged uh, uh, it's only for those topics where the topic is highly specialized and we can't do a proper job for example any topic on quantum computing it is highly specialized so in that particular example i sent it to reddit for review see if any good comments come come out so i yeah so it was a very useful comment from reddit yeah but arvind in general uh, if among this reviewer forum if we don't have the ability to review a particular area right uh, it is more a, a matter of how we want to do it in devopedia do we even want to go there at all because uh, then uh, yeah even, even leveraging external forums and all that uh, I, I, it's better to keep the areas in within the uh, domains where we have expertise for reviewing, in my view. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a valid point. I already mentioned this to the author, but we want to give uh, authors uh, like uh, a flexible uh, selection of topics. No, correct, so but then then that person needs to they need to have a, their, their profile or their experience should have uh, should indicate that they have the authority to write that article, right? No, we are actually a lot more flexible. We are saying that uh, this is actually for your learning purpose. The authors need not be experts in what they are writing. They no, are that's correct. Doing research correct. and learning. So, uh, as long as it falls inside the domain of the reviewers here, then that is fine. But no, uh, overall, the quality of Devopedia, uh, uh, the standards which we are maintaining, right? Hmm. Uh, that. See, we have to look at it from an end-to-end -end perspective. You are looking now from an author point and saying, yes, we want to promote anybody writing. That's correct. They can write, but then for us to publish that, it has to cross a bar, right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we are still continuing with this thought process where we will allow authors. That is mainly for the anyway, this problem is there only with one author who is preferring to write on quantum computing articles. I don't think any other author has this issue. Because typically people are writing on cloud computing, data science, uh, particular tools like Apache, Kafka. For for all these topics, we have enough expertise in house among right. our authors to uh, reviewers to review these things. 